Welcome to the Drop in a Coil show with Larry Woods, Rob Works, and me, Flash, on this uh, Thursday evening in Denmark. It's 8 p.m. here on the 11th of June, 2020. Hey, Grimner, thanks for the uh, platform to use to be able to do this every week. Appreciate that a lot. And if you're in the chat and you want to know uh, who to chat with or you want to come to the chat to chat with, for your reading and writing entertainment, we've got Barman, Beetle, Cowboy Tech, Grimner, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, Chalcedoni, Sirflu, Dan Van Meter, Duh, Echelon, Me, Frumpy Work, Frumpy, Gramsy, Java Doctor 2, hey, good good report on his knee, too, for those that have been following him, uh, J. Dread, Meister Brow, Prince, Rob Works, Trust Number 1, Vanna White, W4DKB, The Chloe Singular, The Phantom, hey, there's the bubbler, CC66, Cyborg, Noodle, Eman, and Siv, Free Enslaved, Gromit, Guest 19593, sounds like a prisoner, Jays, Nines, Jays in Scotland, Kiss, Matt, WJ2002, Mr. Snick, Pone Sauce, Sock Puppet, Smart As, and The Holiest Roger. Now, it's your lineup for typing tonight. And now, here's Rob and Larry. Hello, for everybody. Me. Hey, Larry. Hey, how you doing, Rob? Pretty good, pretty good. Yourself? Wonderful. Another good day here. Yeah. Watching the squirrels build a summer nest, dropping leaves outside the window. Oh, fun. Yep. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody that's watching and listening from BitChute. Or is that Bitcoin? BitChute. BitChute, okay. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've been working in Albania today uh, over the internet. Thank goodness, it's a long way to walk. Um, and explaining how to wire these coils so that you can use them in place with electronic equipment. It's always fun to see people realizing that you don't have to burn out your equipment to get high output and high frequency from it. Right. Yeah, that's uh, very interesting. Uh, we, uh, we've got some different styles of coils. Every every coil, no matter who makes them or what shape or, or configuration they're in, every coil will do something. Right. And these coils are just doing things that aren't normal. Like uh, when you have a, a transformer, you get DC out of a transformer, period, up to now. We get AC. That's quite different. Uh, and that's just because of the interaction of the magnetic subatomic frequency with the material of the copper subatomic frequency setting up a mutual resonance. Right. It's yeah, weird. The, the possibilities are so fascinating. I, I, I sit around and daydream about the things, the possibilities of what this thing can do. Or what these, the whole concept. Well, you use 10 wire sizes smaller to get the same amperage output without burning up the wire. You can get the fast switching out of it so that you don't burn up your MOSFETs or your transistors. You can use them as a capacitor by shorting one coil out and using the remainder coils. Uh, you can use them as a resistor simply by using one of the extra circuits. Uh, you get different amperages and voltages out of them depending on how you wire it up. With with 12 circuits, that gives you 24 wires. That's 144 different ways to put it together. 72 of them are simply mirrors with opposite polarity. Okay. But that's a lot of size. Yeah. A lot of things you can play with. 
Yeah, that's. Uh, I wish I understood it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd like to like to discuss how to put together your work area today. Uh, I think that's real important. Um, circuits have to be tuned. That means that that they have to be in harmony with one another. Right. And any metal surface that you have changes the inductive properties of your coils. So you can't have anything metal, not even nails or screws in your workbench. You can't have your workbench next to a wall that's metal or a wall with screws and nails in it because the inductance from these coils, some of them, could possibly heat up those screws and nails and start your house on fire. Yeah, that would not be good. Not be good, no. So there's there's some things that we need to talk about. Yeah. Grounding or earthing, as the Europeans would call it, is very, very important. Like I've told you before, the power company makes perfect power where voltage and amperage starts at the same time. That's 100% power factor. Every bit of electronic gear that you've got puts odd harmonics in your system, which are in opposition to power flow. Noise on the line for you guys that have an oscilloscope. So you, you can't use the ground wire from your house system or your building system. That ground wire is dirty. That means it's got a lot of noise on it, a lot of static, which is super frequent, uh, super high frequency interference going in opposition to power flow. So you don't want that, which means that you've got to have a separate ground on your power system, on the power system that you use to, to for your test equipment, which means you've got to be you've got to drive your own ground rod at least 10 feet away from any other ground rod or ground source in your in your house or your building whatever uh that's real important that's that's the first most important the second most important is you can't have any metal in your workbench because that sets up a resonant frequency and an induction between what you're testing and the and the the table that it's on. So that's important. Uh, setting up your own power into a building that's away from your building is the optimal way to do this. Uh, putting wood pegs in your workbench instead of nails or dovetail your pieces together. Right. Uh, and it should all be something non-conductive. It could be plastic. It could have a plastic table to, to do your work on. So that's okay, too. And a lot easier to do. You can buy one of those in a store. Right. Um, but uh, the, the different ways to, to hook it up, your power... When you supply power from your your new building with your new your new ground source, that power can be from your mains in your house to your building, but you've got to give it a separate ground supply, and not hook not hook the ground wire to it. Have a separate neutral bar and a separate ground bar in your panel. And a lot of panels have those anyway. Some panels over here in the United States put the neutral and the ground in the same bus bar because they don't care. If your power is dirty, that means the power company gets more money for it. Yeah. it, it so, yeah, they don't care. Yeah, uh, it costs you more electricity to, to run the same, do the same amount of work. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do I overcome it has to overcome the dirty noise on the line? Yeah. And 
and they uh, which creates more dirty noise. So the right. Next, so the next <laughs> yeah. one's got it even worse. Uh, an earth battery is the most efficient way to do this if you're not powering it from one of our coils. Coils. Uh, an earth battery is a copper tube and an iron tube are a carbon rod and a, and a copper tube separated by a, pl a piece of plastic that just has to go over the portion that's above the ground because you get a ground bleed. The, the ground itself will transfer the, the bad stuff between one and the next. Uh, those, in my mind, need to be tw uh, 10 feet apart minimum, but you can get like a, a volt and a half out of them that are two or three feet apart. Uh, just if, if you put the plastic over it so that you don't get the ground bleed. Um, so that's a good way to do it. You just put all those in series so that the amperages add and they'll give you all the amperage that you need if you keep putting more in. Uh, you get milliamps out of one, but you just hook those together and keep hooking them together until you get up to the amperage that you need and the voltage that you need. Right. So, and also out of your out of your earth earth batteries, your ground batteries, you can take a wire from one of those and run it up a tree and use the entire tree as an antenna for your radios or whatever. Right. Your TVs. Those things are good. Uh, balance the load in your panel will give you a, a system that doesn't drop off the imbalance to your ground wire. We've talked about all this before, but I'm just yeah. going over to make sure people remember. Um, just a good recap. Yeah. Uh, what we've done here is I've got an isolated bus bar. Uh, it's simply a half-inch thick piece of copper that's uh, eight inches wide by three feet long, and I've drilled holes in it, and I put ring terminals up to it for my grounding system. Uh, that works out real well for us. Uh, that uh, of course that is grounded to an external ground rod, so that's important. Right. <laughs> you you want to ground that one because it'll be hot if you don't. Yeah, it'll get saturated. Yeah, you you'll get shocked off of it. Uh, some of these coils. In fact, a lot of the coils that, that other people are making, we've got one that doesn't, but a lot of the coils that other people are making will put out a magnetic field and an EMF, electromotive force, electric field, that is dangerous to people. So they need to be operated inside of a Faraday cage, or you need to be inside of a Faraday cage to operate it. A Faraday cage, and I like a solid Faraday cage with no holes in it. A lot of people just put up a grid system, uh, lattice work on the on the walls around you to to separate that or to, to catch that EMF. That's okay, but if you're using high frequency, if the width or the distance apart or the size of the squares in your lattice have got to be smaller than your wavelength because all they are actually is an antenna that's picking up this EMF and, and giving it some place to go. All of the Faraday cages have to be grounded. If they're not grounded, they'll saturate and shock you 
once they saturate, they are no longer effective. Uh, okay. And things like that. Um, and if you're using high frequency, that's millimeter ground, uh, frequency. It's it's real, real, real small. So a fine screen will work for some of it, but some of it you've got to have a solid wall or, or it'll just get through without even slowing down. Right. That's why I like a, a solid one just so that you don't have to worry about what frequency you're finally using. Uh, hydrogen can be separated from water at 4230 kilohertz. 4230 40, kilohertz will separate water and make hydrogen and oxygen if you want to run your car on it with just frequency and not electrolysis. And so you would apply that with what? Uh, if you want to run your car on hydrogen rather than gas or hydrogen and gas mixture, uh, that's a way to do it with frequency. So all you've got to have is a frequency generator rather than a, a whole electrolysis system that's uh, that got power going yeah. to it. So you've got a, a frequency modulator. Yeah. Which is basically the same thing you're putting on your coils that generate electricity, but for a different purpose. Right, so yeah. Did, they're putting out a signal at uh, uh, 4230 kilohertz into what? In the water. Just, uh, and just yeah. uh, copper wire in the water? Uh, no, you don't even have to have the copper wire in the water. That's electrolysis. Uh, is this is just a, putting a, a just shaking or? the water. Huh? It's just shaking the water, vibrating the water. Right, but so what mechanism are you turning the signal, the 4230 kilohertz, into a vibration? What are you doing that's, that with? That's, that's just simply a frequency generator. Okay. Uh, your radio is a frequency that. generator. So it's, it's just speaking. tuned. So you put a speaker up there. And so basically, you if you run 4230 you, through the speaker. Yeah. So you got a tank of water. How are you going to vibrate it? Yeah. I mean, you have a you have a frequency generator. That's like a circuit board or a circuit, an IC chip, right? Mm-hmm. That generates right. a frequency, 4230, and sends it out through a wire to some kind of, you can put 4230 through one of the coils and set a pan of water on top of the coil. Just like that. Just like that. That's all there is to it. And you guys that are, that are working with frequency, if you want to know the sweet spots that you get in frequency where you get the, the maximum out of your coils, put a pan of water on it or put a, a, a lid of some kind on it and sprinkle sand in there or salt in it. When it vibrates at a coherent pattern, that's your sweet spot. That's when your equipment is in harmony with itself. Uh -huh. And it's the most efficient. And you don't have to you don't have to do the twelve pages of math involved with it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And you sit there and turn the dial till the pattern is coherent. If the pattern isn't coherent, that's discord. It's not in harmony. Right. It's like tuning a car. Yeah. Yeah. It starts to backfire. You went too far. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. So there, there's easy and lazy people ways around all this math stuff. Yeah. I've always thought that way, too. Um. um Let's see, what else is there on the workbench? Um, you're, the, the way we have built our earth battery here, I've, I've got an earth battery and a capacitor on my 
water ground, a capacitor system on my water ground that pumps all that extra power back into my system. My electric bill runs about $40 a month, uh, and I've got, what, about 2,000 square feet of house, 2,500 maybe, uh, with, and an air conditioner and uh, mostly electric. Uh, so you can lower your power bills by doing this. Oh, yeah. Our grounds, our ground earth battery system is a four post system of two different kinds of metal. We've got two rebars and two copper ground rods, copper clad steel ground, or copper clad iron ground rods. Uh, the copper clad are north and south at 10 foot apart and at the five foot point exactly between those two at 10 foot apart are the two uh, pieces of rebar. Mm -hmm. we've, we've attached a wire physically, electrically, and mechanically to each one of those posts. We wrap the wire all the way around from north and stop at north. Then we go to west, wrap it all the way around and stop at west. Then we go to the south, then we go to the east, and we do this nine times around from each wire, one above the next, never letting the wires cross. That gives us an extra amount of power because it's a capacitive system at that point from the dissimilar metals. To those, you add another coil on top of each one of them because you're going to have two wires left over. You Two ends of your wire at each post. You put another coil on that, and that increases the amperage output. Right. So you've got as many amps and as many volts as you want. That's a real easy system that everybody can do. It takes a lot of wire, but it's yeah. really simple to make. Well, once you figure out how to wind a coil. <laughs> yeah, once you wind the coil properly. Yeah. But this could be done with a standard off-the-shelf toroidal coil as well. It's just that those would be limited by the size of the uh, the laminated iron core that you had in it. Because uh, an 8 inch iron core that's laminated and weighs 7 pounds and costs $105 only is good for 1500 milliamps. And that ain't enough to wind your house on. Not even close. Right. So there's, there's ways to get around the power company uh, if you're not in a place that they will condemn your house when you go off grid. Yeah. Wow, details. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so easy to do that without without uh, rocking the boat. I mean, you leave the meter hooked up. You can hook up all of the, the major essential stuff to your system. And run a porch light on their system and pay the minimum thirty dollar monthly fee, whatever. Yeah. You know, that way they don't you don't get messed with. Yeah. Hey, I got a strange question for you guys. Okay. Because I'm over here in Denmark and I'm I'm reading a lot of horrible things about the states, and it seems to me that there's not going to be a problem with people being off grid in some cities. Oh well, yeah. So. Right, so the time for people to need what you have is coming. Oh yeah, well, in, in that situation, yeah, this is this is golden. Right, because it couldn't. Well, I shouldn't say it couldn't get worse, but if it does get worse than it already is, from what I'm seeing, wow, yeah. you're going to be in. Well, you're going to be in some doo doo. Things are weird yeah. over here, and if the wrong people take over at this next coming election, we're going to be in sorry shape. <laughs> Say hello, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, be isolated but, to the to the population well, centers. You, you were giving yeah. tips on on 
going off the grid for electricity. And right now, it just struck me that, wow, it seems like some people need it. That's so this is the time That's to the time get the thing, Yeah. You know, if you have any more to add to that going off the grid because it's so appropriate right now. I'm sorry, Larry. I get one. Oh. <laughs> okay, we can we can go off the grid with the water systems as well. Wow. It doesn't matter how dirty the water is that you get out of the ground. If you can dig a well and hit water, do it. That is an electrolysis pro process. You have two tubes, one inside the other. The inside tube is what you hook your water to, and it has holes in it. You hook your cathode, your negative wire, to that tube. You hook your anode, the positive wire, to the outside tube. That creates electrolysis inside, but what it does is that it separates all the water into hydrogen and oxygen, and then recombines it after the plasma arc from the electrolysis has burned all the bad stuff, including up to staph germs, out of the water. Huh. And that's just two tubes. So that's kind of, kind of like a, a distillation. It's, well, kind of, but distillation kills the water. Yeah. This does not. This just, through plasma, simply burns all of that into nothingness. All of all the bad stuff. You still got all the minerals in the water. You still got all the the vitamins that come from the minerals in the water. But you eliminate all the viruses and the bacteria from the water. All the organics. Yeah, all the organics are killed. Okay. Whoops. Whoops. That doesn't sound like a good idea to me. Oh yeah. Are you sure? Absolutely. And how is the public going to be afraid? <laughs> You're taking all the excitement out of it, Larry. Stop that. There's no need to be afraid of anything. There really oh, there is you. not anymore. The only thing you should be afraid of is that evil demon in your mind that <laughs> creates fear. I'm aware. I do my best. You are aware. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm it's sure most of us are. Living up to yeah. it's not so easy, but knowing it, it's a good percentage of it, being aware. Yeah. But this is all in my mind. Whatever this drama is, it's what I see, not what you see. I've got a friend that calls me almost every day to check on me. I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, yeah. When, when he doesn't call, mm -hmm. my mind is, oh, man, did he get in a wreck? <laughs> it hurt. It's time for you to come uh, check on him. Did he go to jail? Uh, well, I know he didn't go to jail because I'm the one he calls if he does. But <laughs> it just, you know, your own mind is your worst enemy. Oh, always. Oh, yes. I don't. And sometimes sharing your inner thoughts with others is just not a good idea. <laughs> really. <laughs> I, I speak for all three of us on that one, but I'm joining into the group. Yeah, nope. But, hell, some of the best ideas I ever heard in my life turned out to be the truth. But at the time, it sounded weird. But with a little time, you go, hey, that's true. Wow. Who knew I didn't really need a driver's license after all? <laughs> right, Rob? <laughs> a what license? Well, you know, to have the, having the, just like your, your electrical coil situation, you got to have the guts to not do certain things sometimes. It's not always being, no, I'm not afraid of electricity. It's, I'm not afraid of failing. I'm going to do that. Yeah, that's the biggest uh, problem with most people is they never try. Yeah, yeah. Try driving without a license. See what happens. Oh, no, I got to follow all the rules. And here's Larry breaking every freaking electrical rule there is to break and coming out with a better product. <laughs> yep. This is why I harp on, on my other programs about how failed we are as a collective. This is oh, yeah. embarrassing. And here you are. You got the perfect perfect answer at the perfect time in, in the world, and we're talking to 50 people. <laughs> I know. It's sad. 
they're not desperate enough yet, Larry. But yeah. when they are, you've already set the you know set the tone. Right. We're also not the only ones doing it. There's other groups out there, 50, 100, and 1,000. I hope so. Oh, Fuck, this, yeah. this is the whole point, is to make this common knowledge. The same common knowledge about this would shift everything in the life that we see it's, today. It's coming, <laughs> it's coming around. Well, no, it's burning down. Well, I guess we're burning it down first to fix it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not really sure what's going on, but it looks so good. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. I'm out. Hey. Uh, I'm going to pull up my formula book here and give you a formula if I can find it. Okay. It won't be but just a second. Um, talk amongst yourself. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, Rob. I know this isn't your strong suit. Yeah, I'm not a monologue oh. guy. <laughs> I'm not a okay. problem. I'm back. Hey, that was so fast. Lightning. <laughs> Okay. As well, Take it away, I've, Larry. I've been explaining this this morning, so it might help. Uh, standard electrical formula is resistance is volts divided by amps. Okay? That's what everybody uses, but they leave out frequency and magnetism. If you're going to leave out frequency and magnetism, that changes the formula to resistance cubed equals voltage divided by amperage. Resistance cubed equals volts divided by amps. Or the cube root of amps equals volts divided by ohms, which is resistance. That's the new formula for electricity with our coils. Okay. So if you've got 0.46 ohms of resistance at one volt, that yields 2.174 amps. Okay. Never mind. I think that just went over everybody's head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that later on when we get deeper into how this stuff really works. Yeah. Um, well, again, like I said before, most people don't want to, don't want to know how it works. Yeah. They want, they, want to, they want to hook it up and forget about it. Yep. That's me. I'm lazy. Yeah. Well, uh, well, I'm the king of lazy. Wait a minute. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Like Ask that. my wife. She'll tell you. Laz had to chime in on that one. <laughs> Hi. I don't know. We might have a contest going. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm old, I'm cheap, and I'm lazy. I want to buy something once that will last forever. I don't want to fix it, and I don't want to have to do anything with it. I want it to just be there and do what it's supposed to do for the rest of my life. Well, these coils will do that. They'll they'll provide your your electricity for your house. They will replace every electronic component so that you cannot burn them. Well, you can burn them out, but it takes massive amounts of power to do it. You can just do everything with this. Uh, the the secret. <laughs> It's just letting it happen. Yeah. The the coil that we're testing that I tested in Albania today, when you put meters on the circuits that you're not using, they won't read amperage, voltage, or resistance. They read absolute zero in everything. But when you put a load on it, the load works. And the more load that you put on it, the better it works. It's it's weird. It's not according to anything in standard electricity. And these guys did that today? Yeah, you know, yeah that's what we were doing today. Did some more light bulbs? Yeah, yeah, they got some more light bulbs. How many, uh, how many did you end up getting on it? Uh, we put 10 on it before we ran out of light bulbs. Okay. And, and they all came up to full brightness. 100, and that, 100 light bulbs? 
uh, no, yeah, they were 100 watt light bulbs, but they were 220 volt. Oh, cool. And he's getting 300 volts out of it at 12 volts input. So, you know, there you go. Damn. And that 12 volts AC comes out of one of our other coils with a hall back array in it. Right. And a hall back array is just magnets that are more one pole than the other. Yeah. That's a magnet array. Yeah, it's a magnet array. Yeah. So it's usually configured in a circle. It is in our case because it goes in the vortex of the coil and the hole in the donut. Right. So don't be afraid to try these things. Don't be afraid to try new geometric shapes for coils. Uh, if you're going to switch your coil rather than using flat line DC on it, if you're going to pulse it, you need to eliminate the iron core. The iron core makes all of your electronic equipment heat up. Yeah. That's why we're using another type of coil to replace all the electronic equipment. Right. I was coughing, excuse me. Um, it, it's all fun. It's all easy. Just think about how electricity works. And that's something else I need to get into. There is no such thing as electron exchange. Let's talk about copper. Copper has one electron in the outer valence of the rings on the atom. Okay, that's the, the outermost ring of atoms. Electron. There's only one electron there. Common thought is that those electrons switch from one atom to the next. Right. Well, think about that. If you pull an electron off of copper, it's no longer copper. That's what I, yeah. So it's the what interaction. Is, what is, what is the, uh, what does it become? Uh, uh, there's a chart out there somewhere that tells you. Yeah, it, it, there's a chart, but I haven't looked it up. But it's no longer copper. Because copper's got one electron in the outer valence. When you strip that off, it's something else. Right. So it, it doesn't move. What it does is transfers the energy from one atom to the next if it is a compatible atom. Right. So keep talking. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just... I'm against what we learned in school because it's not always correct yeah. and it's not and always it's, the it's, full knowledge. Exactly. It's definitely not always all there. Yeah, they leave parts out and they do that so that we don't make our own power and eliminate the power company. If they can't charge you for it once a month, they don't want you to have it. That's why I'm against the grid system. You can produce energy enough to supply yourself at your house any amount that you need simply by doing the coil right. Or you can even do the coils wrong and still get enough energy to, to use in your house. Um, one one other thing I gotta I gotta say again: do not let the wires in your coil overlap. When you're feeding the wires out of your coil to your to your terminal strip, don't cross the wires. When you're wiring your coil, don't cross the wires. Don't stack the wires. Keep One of our guys made a pancake yeah. coil that was vertical, uh, a bifiler coil that was vertical. One coil on top of the other one. He made it out of lamp cord. Just because it was easy. <laughs> well, what happened is he, from the center, that that piece of wire he drew out across the circle of the other wires on his pancake coil. Well, he's producing with his electronic equipment, he's producing a 3,000-volt spike out of a 12-volt system and trying to collect that spike. Uh 
Uh -huh. Well, that's really sweet, but when he drew that wire across the top of his coil, <laughs> that broke down the dielectric and the insulation, and it arced. It burned out a 3,000-volt arc uh -huh. in his upper coil. Right. So... He fried it. it yeah, he fried it. Well, you bet he fried it. And Copper, one of the other uh, guys atomic, tried... Uh, Copper's atomic number is 29. Okay. And so that means it has 29 electrons. All uh, together, yeah. Yeah. So if you take so one of those away, 28. 28 is nickel. Okay, so you, you change your copper into nickel. from copper, it would turn it into nickel. So it's still a conductor, but it's it's not as good a conductor. It has much more resistance to it. Yeah. And resistance so, is just the resistance of the electron interaction. Yeah. So that's the coffin again. Uh, yeah, it, just fun stuff. Things yeah. to think about. But uh, back to your what you were getting into with the electron exchange thing. I, yeah. I don't. I never really bought into that either. I mean, if if electrons are moving down a wire, and you know, once I, once they've there's only so many atoms in the wire. Sooner or later, it's all gonna. No, it's just going to spill out all over the floor. Or something. Yeah, I mean, that just doesn't make sense. It's not logical. So, what happens? It's a magnetic exchange. Yeah, you, you've got to think about things logically. If it doesn't make sense, it can't be real. So, I'm thinking it's more along the lines of, like, like the... Uh, Oh, the the thing you see on people's desks with the balls hanging on strings, and you pick one up and drop it, and it taps it on the other side, and it tap, tap, tap back and forth. Archimedes pendulum. Okay. So I'm thinking there's more of some, that type of interaction going on. Um, something's hitting one atom yeah. or electron, and it's bumping the next one and bumping the next. Same way sound works. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, it's the interaction of the magnetic field. Right. As, once again, everything has three properties. What are they, Rob? Uh, frequency, ele uh, electricity, and magnetism. There you go. Everything that there is, everything from a photon all the way up to the entire universe has those three things. That means that everything is basically the same. Yeah, it's just vibrating at a different frequency. That's it. Which is already written into the uh, periodic table. I mean, it tells you. Is that how my is. eyes define color? Yeah. Yeah. The different the frequencies of light. Yes. Colors are frequencies, okay. yeah. Mm. So if my, my corneas are impaired, right? I've got bent corneas. One's way worse than the other one, but between the two eyes, I, I can't see without corrective lenses. But I don't have color blindness. But what I do have is clarity. I can't really enjoy a color unless I can use my, you know, glasses. I can't really see it. So how does the uh, adding an exterior of the lens to the eye. That changes the frequency of the color I see? That changes the intensity of the color. Oh, oh, oh okay. That, yeah, that's what I was trying to find. Okay. Yeah, I didn't they're, know how to put words to it. They're either magnifying lens or either concave or convex. Either magnify or make smaller one way or the other. Okay. Interesting. Well, I've had these, you know, questions, and I've asked other people over life, and, you know, they usually tell me, hmm. I don't know, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you know? And here I got you guys, and when I have a frequency question hit me, I, I just kind of feel like taking advantage of it and asking. Okay, that was my big question for the moment. I'm backing out. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of a frequency nut. Uh that's what I did a lot of my work career is 
eliminated the harmful frequencies from industrial use. Right. And that's that's an LRC circuit. Inductance, resistance, and capacitance. That's all it is. Everybody can do it. I, I, I ain't nothing special. Uh, it's, if you know the formulas, it's cake work. Are you going to do the size of the equipment to the right size of the load? Okay, and so, Larry, to me, what you're saying is that all my senses are just a result of different frequencies. Yeah. But they got different identifying names for it to make it all sound so you know, difficult to understand. Complicated. God, that's yeah. it. Ah, thank you, Rob. Even smell, even smell is a frequency. Yeah, you vibrate the olfactory nerve, and it yeah. senses something, and it sends ideas to your brain, and you think, yeah. or you feel stuff. <clears throat> that's well, why your farts smell better to you than anybody else. I would hope so. <laughs> but I could strip the wallpaper off the bathroom mm-hmm. wall. Yeah, well, bragging doesn't really go anywhere in this kind of experience. The chat room will probably have better stories. <laughs> but I like that. I like thinking about that. Oh, and one of your harshest people on the RLM chat, Mr. Duh, is skeptical. And I, I believe, in my opinion, that's where somebody with a working understanding of coils would be listening to you describe what you're describing. Their response is exactly what he says. What was so he kind skeptical of, about? He, well, the first thing that everybody says is the design. They want to see, if they've got knowledge, they want to see a design. You can't do that because it's not public yet. Okay, so I will, I will tell you the exact design. It's a one times, two times, or three times phi. That's it. That's all there is to it. It's a phi relationship. The the coils are spirals, slow spirals. Ours are two phi. The the some of ours are two phi. The most efficient of ours are two phi, which means it's a nine by eighteen, not a nine by nine. Go to your vortex math, plot a nine by nine coil. Do not twist your wires. Do not let your wires overlap. Don't put more wire on the coil than the hole in the donut will accept. That's it. See, that's the point. Sometimes simplicity. <laughs> that's always the answer in the end. It doesn't look that way when you're in the middle of a problem, though. Well, because you know, you're thinking and you're reacting and you're having memories and all this other shit going on in your head. And if people just could, uh, I don't know, I can't adjust myself to all this other stuff when I'm trying to do something that I don't know what I'm doing. Just like this one coil does not show anything whatsoever on the circuits that are not being used, and yet you can put a load on them, and they they work the load. So wow. it, it's, it's... There's no power until you need power. Yeah. And there's something else. Ether, what everybody calls the ether... Ooh, special word. It's coming from nowhere. That's mm-hmm. bullshit. Ooh. Ether is the magnetic field. Just people have never learned to, to look at it. The ether is the magnetic field. The interaction of the magnetic fields with your wire, the interaction of the magnetic fields one circuit to the next. Mm-hmm. These coils, when you make them properly, have two circuits together, each of them going the opposite direction. That makes the magnetic field run the same direction in both positive and negative. They have an empty space on each side with two two other circuits next to that empty space. 
you get mutual induction from each of the wires that are next to one another. They mutually induct both electrically and magnetically. The empty space allows the magnetic field to expand, and as it gets closer to the center of the coil, or the center of the donut, that compresses that magnetic field, making it stronger. Then as the wire goes around the outside, and around making loops around the coil, that compresses the magnetic field inside the ring of the coil. And on the 12 circuit, that gives you three perfect tornadoes that are rotating in that coil as, as the power moves, as the electrons interchange or uh, <laughs> as the electrons influence one another. Interact, yeah. Interact, yeah, not yeah. exchange, interact. Yeah, I lose a word every now and again myself. Later. <laughs> but, you know, while you were talking about the magnetic field, I was, to get a visual, I was thinking of traffic. Down, yeah. you know, not, I mean, on an interstate, or like when I used to have to drive from, say, the valley to L.A., mm -hmm. or to, to Orange County, say, that bumper-to-bumper -bumper gridlock, the, you know, a 60 mile ride and it takes you two hours to get there. Uh, it's going from a five lane highway to a two lane highway. Mm -hmm. Compressing the traffic. Hmm. Now, does that make it, but in this case, no, no, it's no, no, not, no, no, not people, it makes it more efficient, right? Yeah, much more efficient. Because if you tried to compress traffic, you'd have dead bodies. <laughs> Yeah, that's Seems where you get them into traffic jams when you got more on ramps. It would make <laughs> yeah. Oh, I loved LA when I was there. Anyway, well, it compresses it going down through the center, but then when it comes out of the center, it, it spreads back out again. So exactly, when it comes out of the hole in the donut, you've got a perfect tornado. And so that can, that would create a pulse. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay, so I wrote a question related to this because I don't know how to ask it properly, but I'm going to give it a try, right? So everything is being measured physically, right? Mm -hmm. But you're, you're talking about energy. How do you physically me measure energy in a way and then tell it to a, you know, a simpleton like myself that doesn't understand all the details of it, right? So what we seem to be doing is comparing physical mass in measurement to electrical mass. And what? I, it gets... Hmm. Okay. Am yeah. I losing you with my, my own confusion, or did it... No, make no. Sense? No, no, okay. it makes sense. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> the more amperage you put into a circuit, the stronger the magnetic field. Okay? With these circuits being separated... You got two together and then a space and then two together and then a space until you got 12 circuits. With these having separation between each pair of them, that gives you the on, on, off of your heartbeat. That allows the magnetic field to expand. But that expansion of the magnetic field is compressed as it goes toward the center of the donut. So you're squeezing it. You're giving it. You're you're putting just as much energy into it, but getting it out of a smaller space. That's more smaller like a nozzle on a hose. Yeah. As opposed to traffic going down five lanes to three, that doesn't. That doesn't. Huh. That's not an accurate an analogy. Um, no, that, that's what I was saying. Is I'm so limited in my understanding that. Yeah. I seem to find myself trying to compare mass with energy, and there seems to be a difference I can't explain. Uh, I just know it's there. I just don't know how to put words to it. There's got to be a way to explain. It's like crushing, you know, uh, traffic down. You kill people, so you can't do that. But if it's a, a another form of electrical energy, you can do that. What? Yeah, I I don't consider electricity to be mass. Right, right, right. But I compare it to it because I don't have any other way, is what I'm saying. That's where my mistakes came in. The school that I did get that taught me how to do calculations, it's all based on what I can physically see. 
Mm-hmm. So when I hit electricity, I hit a brick wall. Boom. How do you do this? It's a whole other world. Well, you have to be able to visualize to see the magnetic field. You can read it with a meter, yes, but if you can visualize it and see where it's going and what it's doing, then you sort of get an idea. You when the when the on the outside equator of the donut, when the pairs of circuits are separated, then you've got an expansion. That magnetic field is allowed to grow and make do whatever it can do. And then as you get closer, it squeezes that and forces it into a stronger magnetic field. It's just the geometry. It's all about geometry and nature. Look at a sunflower. Look at the seed arrangements in it. Look at a fern as it's unfolding. Look at a seashell. It's all the same. There's nothing random about nature, really. It seems that way, but I think it's size. It, Wait, you know, angle you're looking at something. It, you know, like that. Perspective, absolutely. Look at yeah. the shadow of a cylinder. From one end, it's a circle. From the <laughs> other side, it's a, a rectangle. And it ne- never does it look like a cylinder until you twist it. <laughs> so you got to be able to look at things from all different angles. I'm trying to. It's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, when you're stuck, you've got these ideas that were pounded into you from childhood in your head, and you've done things physically, and then I talk to you, and all of a sudden, a lot of that didn't really make sense. So I went, hmm, there's a more to with it, what I see than I can understand, which is kind of interesting. Doesn't usually get my attention, and this did, but I can't do much with it, and I'm not... I'm not set up for the physical part of it, but the uh, the intellectual bit. It's really good. <laughs> Makes it, me think. It took me from October of last year to, to just about a month ago before the guys that are electronics guys in our R&D department have finally accepted what these things can do because it, it can't work like that. That's not what I learned in school. In fact, last week, one guy says, I'm going to have to give up all my degrees because this doesn't make sense to me. It's just everything we know, that what we know for an absolute fact today changes tomorrow. Hmm. How do you mean that exactly? Well, I I believe that the sky is blue. Well, the sky is not blue. That's the refraction of the light coming (laughs) through. So the yellow light that comes out of the sun is blue when we see it. Uh So because of the vibration of that particular uh, wave. Vibration of our atmosphere, yes. Not the wave. Okay, wave was wrong. All right. But everything is vibrating. I'm vibrating. Larry and Rob are vibrating. A rock vibrates. Right. Well, <laughs> but uh, well, see, that's what I'm saying. It, th- these concepts have been so tossed aside and ignored my whole life with most of it. So to wake up to it today is, wow. Now I know what a voter feels like when they see they wasted their time. <laughs> It's the vibrational frequency that makes things attract one another. Uh, you mean like the wife, perhaps? Uh, well, like your like your wife, yeah. Or like a rock. A rock vibrates according to the composition of the material in that rock. Mm-hmm. And the material in that rock gathers together because of the vibrational frequency, because of the subatomic frequency of all the particles in it, attract other particles. So it creates a magnetic sort of like a vein being, and it absorbs, or it contra- not absorbs, but it attracts. It attracts. So it builds itself together. Yeah. Well, what we think of as empty space has got all the components of mass in it. 
It's well, just that they haven't combined yet. Is that what they call the COVID? Mm. Oh, I never heard it quite put that way before. Okay, combined yet. Because mm-hmm. I'm aware, I mean, damn, we're such little beings on this gigantic bit of earth, whatever it is. It's huge. And we're just these little people on it. think we're so damn important. <laughs> and wow. I, let's there, talk about gravity for a minute. In the grand let's. Thing, Gravity is not an unknown force. The earth is negative. The sky is positive. Everything on top of the earth that's stuck to it is just a little bit more positive than the earth. Gravity is nothing but static electricity, just like rubbing your hair on a balloon. So if we could discharge our... uh, once you discharge, once you break that bond, the hair falls off of the balloon. Yeah. So all we've got to do is reverse the charge of the material that we've got to make it levitate. Or at least be weightless. Or at least be weightless, yeah. And that is how I believe that they built the pyramids. Simply yeah. through frequency. A bunch of people getting around chanting the right words and the right language to give it the right frequency, beating the drums and blowing the horns to give it the right frequency to eliminate the mass. And these things have all been made fun of and ridiculed right out of society. Yeah. That's like the guy at Coral Castles. We talked about that already. Too. Absolutely. And yet, these people in Hollywood will spend millions of dollars to promote a certain musician, say, or singer, say. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I've learned that over the years there's way more to that. People think it's political and all this other shit. Yeah, I think it's, they just know how to manipulate us through frequency, and we're not in, educated about it. That kind of sums it up to me. Sure, yeah. sure. I'm out of that going you know? on, yeah. Then you've got all these other add-ons with verbal society, but just basically what you got is a frequency, and if you're not involved in it, the people that are look badly upon you. Yeah. Oh, you don't like this particular musician? What's wrong with you? Well, I, I don't like what he does politically, so I don't support him financially. <laughs> I don't understand the words when he's screaming. Well, when there's that time you were brought up into also dictates your taste. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But beyond that, I mean, the frequency is there to either repel you or attract you. Yeah. So they get either, but they do this on purpose to get both response, right? Mm-hmm. As long as we're out of harmony and we're all at, at odds with each other about shit, that doesn't matter. We lose. Rap music makes me violent. Say, duh. I can't. I don't want to see you violent. You probably hurt somebody. You <laughs> crazy old fucker. <laughs> oh, you hey. well, I'm just kidding, man. No, it, it, it's just different people react in different ways. If you want to remain agitated, sure, go for it. But I don't. When right. I when I'm agitated, my stomach gets upset, and I don't like that. So I I remain calm. Uh, Walk in the yeah. room calmly and peacefully. Look at everybody and decide who you're going to kill first. Hmm. Yeah, welcome to Chameleon. <laughs> yeah. So, what I figure what you're talking about is you can actually control your own frequency by deciding what mood you feel like you're going to be in. Oh, absolutely. And that's been proven by the Japanese guy that Yep. Love into the water and froze it and hate into the water and froze it and all the different emotions and froze it and it came out with a different pattern. But by being a human being, we're trained to see these things, to find a, a, a villain, to blame somebody else for why you're upset. That's what we do. Don't spread into me. I, can, I catch myself after the fact every fucking time I'm yeah. doing it. I don't think I'm doing anything. But it's if you're not my fault. To me, yeah, but if you're listening to me, you feel victimized. Yep. Oh, yeah. What the fuck is your problem? I didn't say 
But I'm not listening to what I'm saying. I'm saying it. Yeah, so, it's not my fault. That's the way I was raised. Bullshit. Right, it, it's your yeah. fault. Yeah, but when you're doing it, how do you regain that composure and get on top of yourself so you don't dig the hole you're in any deeper? You just have to learn to control your emotions. Oh, yeah, I'm 60. I think I got a handle on that. <laughs> But I still no. get upset once in a while when people contradict what I'm saying. But then when they prove what they're saying, I, I know a lot. Or when when I can prove what I'm saying and they agree, then I know a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're not living for the fight. You're living for the answer. It's no. a big difference. No. I think sometimes I enjoy the fight. And I'm not aware of it when I'm doing it. But after the fact, I look back and go, what? Well, how was I being a prick? I would rather be a warrior who raises a gardener garden than a gardener who needs to be a warrior. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. Well, I abstain. I don't feel threatened by life, so I don't even care anymore. No, I, I think you bring on in life what you want. Yeah. That's how I feel, so I don't feel I feel uh, my my. A being is not bringing on all kinds of negative. So I don't live in fear. I'm I'm the same to all people mm -hmm. until they make me be different. Yeah. But I do have a dog and a baseball bat in the house in case I get a visitor. Absolutely. It, it's like a death trap to get into the house if you know how to get into it. Because the front's in the back and the back's in the front. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Oh. Everybody anyway. gets a fair shake until they prove me right. See? Yep. The quiet guy. And by prove me right, I mean they all suck. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Yeah, they do. What am I thinking? Yeah. I was trying to be optimistic because I want to not laugh when I hear the name Joe Biden. He's POTUS. <laughs> of the POTUS thing. I mean, I'm going to hear it in July, in uh, January, and I, I'm just dreading it. If, if the U.S. lasts that long, it might not. His latest statement was, I want somebody that can take over on day one. <laughs> I want a running a mate, mate that can take win. over and on day go. one. <laughs> Is that Joe Biden? <laughs> That's Joe Biden. He can say that. Yep, I was president. Wow. <laughs> uh, now, there's the guy that needs a lesson in gravity. Wow. Oh, yeah. Drop him from wow. a plane. In a few other things. Feet. It wouldn't help. He had children. His kids are more disastrous than he ever was. Really? Oh, good Lord. He he planted the seed, you know, 40 years ago, but his kids are out there destroying, what is it? Uh, what country in Europe were they, forget, check something or another? But they were all tied up in this billion-dollar uh, oil scam or energy oh, scam. I get, I, there's think? so many disasters all over the freaking world every freaking day. It's hard to remember yeah. them all. <laughs> yeah, they were involved in all that Ukraine thing. With the, with the, Ukraine, uh, thank you, Ross. Oh, I couldn't remember, but that's what I mean is we got, we're spending all our freaking uh, grown time looking at the adults of the children that are doing the crimes. The children are doing the crimes. We're looking at the daddies. Yeah. Waste, waste, waste. Man, you yeah. talk about them. Waste. Yeah, that dead uh, neck deep in it all, too. Mm. Raise your dog to be vicious, and he's going to be vicious when you die. Hmm. Well, I, I got a grim quote from the, uh, the other night. He did does a radio podcast, and he said, reality is worse than what crazy people come up with. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. And that's a grim quote. <laughs> but, uh, wow, it just caught my attention. I wrote it down so I could bring it up to you guys. All these things, they're all intertwined in ways we're not actually taught to recognize, so we fight them. <laughs> hey, we're fighters. I'm gonna run out for a minute. Okay, but we're fighters, right there. Yeah. I mean, I, you I name it. it. Go ahead. Will you name it. We'll fight about it. <laughs> yep. I I look at everybody and see the faults in people. 
not so that I can criticize them, but so that I can see things that I do not want to be like. Well, damn. it's not that hard to do when you're in the same frame of mind. No. But when, when you're, you know, you sucked into the drama and the anger and all this other crap, you don't know it's happening when it's happening. You, I don't. You might. Uh, me, I get sucked in first and think about it for a while and then, oh, wow. Uh, I, get, I get sucked into some things, but pretty, pretty much it's hard to take up space in my head. Mm. I don't know well, if people do that. You were saying people have faults. Well, sure. I mean, that's everybody's got faults. I've got tons of them, but I try to do better. But there's so much attention put on it, on it being like a bad thing when eh, maybe not. There's ways to make things that are negative work for you too. Well, I, I've got OCD when I wire a coil. <laughs> You know, <laughs> no, you can't do it like it that. <laughs> yeah, but you did. Yeah, but I did, yeah. Well, I agree with the uh, trial and error. You do it until you find the way that works the best. Not yeah. just the way that works, but if you're trying to accomplish, like, um, mixing a color, you don't, you can't explain to another person how you personally do something that, you kind of, your hands kind of feel it for you. And if you don't have the eyesight that's like everybody else, you just kind of, uh, you learn to adjust. You come close enough, you know, and you make things work. A few years back, I put all of the coils that failed on the picnic table. It covered the whole top of the picnic table. My filer coils, Tesla coils, Coils with iron cores, coils with magnet cores, and they all failed. They all did not work efficiently. And I took a picture of it. Those are all the things that I do not want to be like. <laughs> yeah, I got it. So what was your uh, guideline to get to the, the uh, end result of the coil that you finally got satisfied with and actually used it? I've got to blame that all on my partner, Evan. Okay, let's hear this. Evan is a mathematical genius. All, all my, I, I was a, I was a, an electrical engineering doctor for 32 years. And all during that 32 years, I knew everything there was to know about electricity. Well, along come Evan. He came into my life and said, well, have you ever heard of vortex math? Uh, no. Well, let me teach you vortex math. Okay. And I learned that, and I said, well, that's kind of neat, but what am I going to do with it? He says, well, have you ever studied pyramid math? Uh, no. So he taught me pyramid math, and that was really neat, and boy, there's things that we can do with this. And then he taught me Solomon math, which is the way they set up Solomon's temple. And I said, wow, that sort, of, that sort of relates to pyramid math and vortex math. Maybe the ancients had a little bit of something to, to, that they really knew about. And then he says, did you know that with vortex math, you can plot the design of a coil on a donut? No. Well, let me help you learn how. And... So he, he showed me that, and we went over a couple of different 9x9, uh, 9 by 9, 9 by 18 and, and the, different, the different sizes and shapes. And I said, wow, uh, maybe that's got something to it. And so we wound one and two and three and four of them, and they didn't really do what I thought that they were that we could get out of a really good coil. Some of them heated up, and some of them just weren't efficient on the output. And finally, he says, "Well, let's try a nine by 18. And sure enough, we put that together and spent hours and hours and hours winding the silly thing, and it worked. So I've got him to blame for all of this. If, if it weren't for his 
saying there's more to knowledge than what you think you know, then we did it. And wow. it works. If more of us could do that. We've well, just got to get out of the books. We've got to believe that there's more than what we know. How do you even do that? You know, when when you get to be as old as we are in the first place, you know, a certain amount of stubbornness seems to go along with it. Oh, you yeah. Just go ahead and try yeah. things. Regardless of, you know, the Joe Schmo over there telling you. To yeah, go Dad's going to go everywhere. ahead and try. Just try that, yeah, just try. You may not so think it'll work. Give it a because shot. people don't try. Yep. You know? What's the difference between a square wheel and a round wheel? you got to try it. Find out. <laughs> square wheels are ride kind of rough. <laughs> <laughs> Would an oval wheel work better? Try it and find out. Yeah. That's loud. Uh, does levitation work? Yes, it does. How? You buck two coils. Now you guys are getting grim. Use magnetic repulsion. <laughs> Square wheels Repul are not wheels, Grim says. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> repulsion is the strongest force. Attraction is not. Repulsion is implosion where attraction is explosion. It's the difference between being a receiver or a transmitter. These coils are all quarter wave antennas. You radio boys, there's your secret. You want to make a coil? Make a quarter wave antenna. That's all these are, is quarter wave antennas. That's why they magnify the signal. Sorry, I had to close my door. <sighs> it's all just stuff. Oh, oh hey, Lone, Lone Frog uh, posted the link. A truck on square wheels drives 50 miles an hour, proving Mythbusters wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Please say that, Graham. Hi. Square wheels. <laughs> you go fast enough. It's only the points touching. Yep. It'll smooth out eventually <laughs> if you go fast enough. <laughs> that frequency modulation. Yep. It's all about the frequency. Yep, and there's a sweet spot in everything, no matter how rough it starts out. Yep. <laughs> He still don't buy it. <laughs> well, he's brought up the sweet spot. Yeah. Well, who is going to argue with that? Come on. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm almost officially moved in. Oh, good. So I've been unpacking bo uh, books today and putting them up. All right. So I'm almost uh, got... Uh, if anybody wants to buy it, I have a 1900 edition uh, from 1900 of Paradise Lost by Milton. Okay. Um, I'm not interested in it, but... <laughs> <laughs> not very many people are, but... Yeah. But it's a good book to read, though. Yeah, I mean, I like books. I don't... Uh, I don't spend a lot of money on them. I have a lot of books from collections that I've put together and been given and inherited and stuff like that. I go to the old bookstore and buy the oldest books that I can find and read them. Yeah. My book from 1868, I believe, uh, an electrical engineering book from 1868, is the most enlightening book I've ever read. Next to the Daniel Davis Manual of Magnetism written in 1864. I just found a book. I didn't even realize I had. Um, 
I should, I should go grab that. Flash, you there? Nope, he died. He went. Yeah. He fell into the hole. He's having a pit stop, most likely. Um, um, when he gets back, I'll go grab that book and see what it is. It's from 1946 or something. All right. Something about electrical or how the uh, electrical engines and stuff like that. Beautiful. Yes. Back yeah, all kinds of steel yeah, coils. Uh, I'll talk. I'm going to be right back. Okay. Anyway, Larry. We were just between, talking about old books. Go ahead. I, uh, oh, yeah. No, I was uh, chewing on a little bit of sandwich. Didn't want to interrupt the show with it. Mm-hmm. I did that right before the show. Well, I didn't. I didn't do it. My wife did made me something. So uh-huh. because there's times where you guys don't need me on the, you know, I can have five or ten minutes book down a little sandwich. Sure, because you can't get Larry to shut up. Oh, hey, I don't want to get Larry to <laughs> shut up. Sometimes I just try to fill in while you're thinking, when it sounds like you're thinking of the next thing you were going to go into. But my personal fascination at this level is the frequency and the vibration of all this. Yeah, that that's what everything does. Right. It vibrates at a certain at a certain speed and that either attracts or repels other things. And yeah. the same things that attract can have the same that have the opposite effect too. You can repel and attract with the same thing. Yeah. It just depends on what that thing is vibrating at at the time. Yeah. Wow. Well hmm. Well, what if I think I'm all vibrating, I'm so irresistible and wonderful and all that shit, and people look at me and they go, wow, I'm crap. Hope he dies real fast so we can push him in a hole. But That's what mind, people do with me. Yeah, but in your mind you're thinking, hey, I'm vibrating and everybody loves me and I'm wonderful, but they don't. Okay, Larry. How do you explain that? I think it's a matter of confidence. You can be so, confident that you're yeah. good, and other people can be confident that you're bad. And which one moving matter, out? It's all a matter of perspective. Wow, that sounds like crap I say, Larry. Are you sure you don't listen to the dork table? <laughs> 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 I wondered who I stole that one from. It's all on how you look at it. That, well, so come on, that's the oldest. The oldest truth that I have is... Well, that's the way you saw it. And everybody else saw something different, but we all saw the same thing, and yet we could never agree on what it was we saw. Five blind men and an elephant. <laughs> Three sighted men and a hooker. I mean, yeah. same thing, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoops. So, Larry. Yes. Hey, uh, do the names Slursberg and Osterheld sound familiar to you? Osterheld, yes. Slursberg, no. Okay, well, this is a book. It's called The Essentials of Electricity for Radio and Television, published in 1950. Wow. Then that talks about a um, a proton accelerator that's the back of the TV tube generated through a magnet and a big coil that projects, uh, it's an ion projector, excuse me, that projects the ions onto the powder of the TV screen for black and white. Okay. Yeah, because the TV, the old TVs were ion projectors. Just like the new propulsion system that they want to use. That's so stupid. If you use ions for propulsion, yes, it will work. You keep pumping them out and pumping them out and pumping them out till you reach speed, but it's going to take you just as long to decrease speed as it took you to increase yeah. speed, and that's silly. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't uh, doesn't uh, make sense. It even has a chapter on magnetism. All right. Relation of magnetism to electricity. Magnets, magnetic materials, natural magnets, and artificial, artificial magnets, permanent and temporary magnets, poles of magnets, theory of magnetism, laws of attraction and repulsion, pole strength, force of attraction, fields, lines of force, field intensity, flux density, induction, 
magnetic properties and classification of materials, shapes, the Earth's magnetism and the compass, magnetic field about a wire carrying a current, relation of magnetic field and electron flow. Magnetic so field. they're still talking about electron flow uh, back then. Yeah, yeah. Magnetic field of a coil. They're probably taking a great deal of that from the Daniel Davis Manual of Magnetism, and it was 1842. The left-hand rule, what's that? Do you know what that is? Left the left-hand rule. Left-hand oh. rule. You go, I'm, I'll shut up. Left-hand rule. Yeah, the left-hand rule. Uh, left-hand and right-hand rule is exactly how our coil works. Two, two opposing coils or two opposing circuits, one going the opposite direction of the other. That's right. the left-hand rule and the right-hand rule working together, just like in a Western Union splice. If you turn the wires on the Western Union splice in the wrong direction, it will create a burnout spot in the wire. Yeah. So that's one of the headings in the uh, magnetism chapter, magnetic circuits and calculations. They also have a chapter on resonance. Yeah. Resonance graphs, plotting, use and interpretation of curves, series resonance, resonance curves, circuit Q, LC product, voltage ratios in series resonance circuits, parallel resonance. Circuit Q is the magnetic power of a circuit, the magnetic resonance of the circuit. Mm -hmm. That's the Q factor. Comparison of a series and parallel resonance circuits, use of resonance circuits, basic electric circuits. So, yeah, I just thought, I didn't even know I had this book. <laughs> that book will teach you a whole bunch. Yeah. So, interesting. In fact, if you ever decide you want to sell it, I'd like to buy that one. Okay. I probably wouldn't sell it to you. I'd be more... Study it first. Gift it to you. <laughs> Study it first. Yeah, but that will yeah. be really good learning material. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's one of the books I found. I have in my special book. I, I can't remember from the life of me where I got this book, though. You probably stole it from a library. No, there's no library thing in it. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Port Arthur College. <laughs> Aha! <laughs> Stamped on the inside cover. I know I didn't steal it from there because I've never been to Port Arthur College, but yeah. <laughs> oh, here's some uh, notes in the back. E over IR. No. Oh. That's the electric yeah. formula using only three variables. You're right. Interesting. I like old stuff like that. Voltage time divided by amperage equals resistance. Voltage divided by resistance equals amperage. Amperage times resistance equals voltage. Good formula, but it's only three parts of five parts available. Because if you change the frequency, that whole thing changes. If you change the magnetic field, that whole thing changes. Right. It's the cube root of the resistance that gives you the amperage. Cube root of resistance to, or, or voltage divided by amperage. So when are we going to build a hover drone? That's easy. So where yeah. are yours? <laughs> use, use the same thing that they're using and simply power it with an LRC circuit. Use capacitors to provide the power for it. Set of capacitors to make it start turning around and a next second set of capacitors to charge while it's turning around. You're done. Yeah. You've, got mag you've got magnets around your rotating surfaces and a toroidal coil around the magnets. That's all there is to it. Just the same design for the, like, the race car thing you did. Yeah, basically. exactly. Um, 
But you're talking about running motor. off the off the propellers for the for the lift. Yeah. Not or you could I'm do it magnetically by bucking two coils. That's what I see. What I want to do is is make one that 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 actually is an anti gravity craft that will just float but not use it for directional. And then okay. have have props on it. So that it just looks like a hover car or, a, or a, it looks like a drone. Yeah. You know, a big drone. Yeah. But you're actually not using the propellers for anything but propulsion. Direction. Not, yeah. For direction, not lift. Yeah. yeah. And that that is so easy to do. I want to It's simply those. magnetic repulsion. Yeah. The earth is negative, so if you put a negative charge on the bottom of your vehicle, that will make it rise off the earth. The hard part is breaking that initial static electricity bond. Right. And that's just shoot it with high amperage to begin with. Yeah, just a spike. Yeah, and then once you reduce, once you get lifted off the ground, you can reduce your power and go on. Or you could just use your propellers to get off the ground, and then yeah, you just power it up, power off the ground, and then kick in the anti grav. Yeah, and the stronger your negative field on the bottom of your craft is, the more lift you've got. Right. So basically, all I wanted to do was like cancel out whatever the volume of the vehicle is. Yeah. So, and then use the propellers for lift and uh, direction. Yeah. Yeah, it's that simple. We should have had this here years ago, man. Absolutely. We should have had this before Tesla's time. Should have had this all back in Daniel Davis's time in 1842, and I'm sure he learned it from somebody else before him. Yeah. Wow, you guys are bringing me down. <laughs> bringing me down. Well, because we're so deprived. Oh, we are. Deprived or depraved? No, yeah, we're, yes. we're deprived as a collective <laughs> of really valuable information. And then we're told this crap that we're told is yeah. really valuable, and it's really not. So it, it just sets you up for a, a whole lifetime of arguing with other people about what, what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. The whole reason for the Spanish Inquisition, I want the knowledge, and I'll kill you after I get it out of you. Yeah. Hmm? <laughs> and then I ain't going to let nobody else have it but me. Yeah, isn't it yep. funny how the public loves to hate on Spain? <laughs> they give all these... Uh, really kind of abstract concepts for a country to start from. The Spanish flu, the Spanish Inquisition. Now, people are were inquisitioning way before Spain was ever even thought of. Oh, gosh, yes. Right, but see, that's what I mean. In the 21st century, Larry, we're still stuck on being told the same tired old stories and lies to keep the bullshit going. And then stuff like what we're doing here is buried underneath. Ah, they're crazy. Yeah, don't listen to that. Mm -hmm. And that's the way people behave. They they think that if the system promotes something, it's good for them. And they can look around and see the results and deny what they see and still go along with it. Yeah. I'm confused. Okay. Well, the TV couldn't lie to me. It's a test they couldn't get away with the brainwashing mm -hmm. system. Oh, you are so mean. I'm so scared. So, what's the what? What is the ultimate solution to our our worldly problems? And shut up and listen. <laughs> Independent. <laughs> the attitude you wish to receive. <laughs> well, yeah, the golden the, rule. The whole point. So when these, it comes, the whole point of these coils and the and the, the abundant energy that they can provide is to gain independence from these oligarchs that have got, got us under their, their, their thumb using oil and uh, their public electricity system which uses everything, oil, coal, and everything else to generate electricity to sell to you when you could have it all you need for a one-time purchase. Yeah. 
I had a guy approach me last week that says, I want a generator large enough for my entire community. I'm having an off-grid community. Yeah. And I says, I won't give it to you. There's, there's no way I will provide a system like that. He says, why not? I said, because somebody is always going to have to maintain the, the transmission lines. And that's not the idea of free power. Right. You'll sell them enough units to power each house. Yeah. But not one for the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, not one for the whole community. It, a refrigerator can have its own power supply. Yeah. Your TV can have its own power supply. Your computer can have its own power supply. There's, there's no point in having a grid that will serve a neighborhood because somebody's always got to be fixing the grid. Yeah. And all of a sudden, there'll always be somebody wanting to monopolize on it. Yeah, and, and somebody wanting money for it. They want to sell it. That's what the guy was probably wanting. He was wanting to set up his own little deal, sweet deal. Yeah. And sell his own electricity. Yeah. That he's getting for a one-time purchase. Yep. That'll run yeah. for hundreds of years. Now, is there a fail-safe to stop that from ever happening? No. Or is no. just a matter of trust? Once the knowledge is out there, it's out there. People can do what they want. We, we've got a 17-coil system that uh, it's actually 18 coils now. Uh, one coil with the haulback haul back array in it provides 12 volts AC to spin a magnet in a big coil that's got a big ball magnet in it. That induces a charge into that coil. There are 16 other coils in close proximity to that coil that all have ball magnets in them that magnetically spin when that big ball magnet spins and induces a charge into all those other coils. This system will power a large industry. So if you've got that, then, well, yeah, let's make a grid system out of it. Well, no, then you've got to charge people every month for that power. Use it for your industry and let the other people have a small coil that produces five kilowatts for their house. If the ungodly amount of power needed to, to for a huge house, if they need more than five kilowatts, which is a ridiculous size house, then put two of them together in series. Yep. Uh, it, it, or, or put two of them together in parallel, sorry. But it, it, it's all the same thing. If you need more power, add another, add another coil. That's all there is to it. Yeah. That's it. No. Oh. Yeah, because you like talking about the, uh, you know, the fountain of youth here, in a sense. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, actually, we are. Depending and upon what frequency you put through these coils, you can heal people with them. Mm -hmm. I believe all this, but the average Joe out there has still got government breathing down his throat 24 hours a day back home, right? Mm -hmm. And I can see their skepticism. Hey, well, how the hell are you going to ever do this? And I think the Internet will survive whatever society is going to go through in the next six months. Well, according to the, to the rules, if you build something for yourself, you can use it. If you build something to sell to somebody else, it's got to have a patent and go through all these safety regulations and all that crap. Well, that's why we're going open source, because we'll never get a patent on it. We can get a patent on it, but then we'll be restricted to selling only to the Department of Defense. And I'm not going to make this country the most powerful army in the world. It already is. Oh, hey, don't worry. It's slowly losing. I'm sure they've already got it. Oh, yeah, they've already got it. They've they got, just don't they get got, it out to the public. It. They got it this and, and, and way beyond. Oh, and then some, sure. They've got the greatest technology and blah, blah, great scientists and all that yeah. shit. 
But they're, they're still being directed by Dollar Bill. Okay. So yeah. well, right, but they're still being directed. So the secret stuff that we don't get told about is what you're talking about, right? Yeah. yeah. And the stuff that we get told is science and look what we did is a bunch of horse shit. Corona fucking virus. Yeah. Oop, did I say that out loud? Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm just saying the public can yeah. be manipulated with a few fucking words because they don't know what the hell they're hearing. They just watch movies. If you say it's it often enough, they're going to believe it. Yeah. I that saw Frankenstein, it. and I'm telling you, when the monster gets hit by the electricity in the storm, guess what happens? He comes, he comes to life. Uh -huh. What are they trying to not tell us with that movie? Uh, this is what I mean is things are right in front of us but buried under different ways to tell us. So we really don't know what they're telling us. We just know, be afraid. See? And that puts you right there where you can't learn anyway because you're afraid. The Stargate movies, that's a reality. That's why we started the Iraq War so that we can go over to Ur where Saddam Hussein for the past 20 years had been developing that technology from a Stargate that he found that he dug up out of the ground. He'd been back engineering that technology and finally got to where he could use it. And then we went over in the Iraq War and Operation Desert Storm and stole it from him. Yeah. Uh, that technology has been around for a long time. Yeah. And that's how they do it. Be like America. If you see somebody with something that you want, go and steal it. Just take it. I'm not anti-American much. No, I'm not either. I'm anti-American establishment. Yeah. I mean, uh, the people pretty much disgust me, but... I don't really blame them per se. Although, How could you? Although, although they do, they do. Have, I mean, everybody shares some of the blame because, you know. Hell yeah, uh, we're the ones that elect these assholes. It, well, well I never, I never that's what they anybody. blame it on, Larry. But that's not so much true either. It, because you know, if there wasn't a turnout for a vote, the state would pick somebody in your stead. It's in the details. It hasn't yeah. mattered who you vote for since the 1800s. No, no. And there's no way to properly and, and account. And even then, it was, it, was just, it was bullshit from the get-go. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I agree with that. That's, that's Well, but pretty at the same time, time like I was saying, you know, everybody, it's a personal, education is a personal responsibility. Yes. Yes. You can choose to remain ignorant. You can choose... To not look, keep your head in the sand, and and whine and cry because the world's gone to shit. Um, or you can wow. choose to face it head on and and do what you can to not support it. Let your life be a friction in in the gears of the machine, or however that wow. thing goes. Um, hmm. Like myself, I mean, I stopped filing income taxes in 1988, and I arranged hey. my life in such a way that I don't. I would, I'm not a taxpayer because I have no nothing that is taxable. <laughs> I mean, of course, I pay uh -huh. taxes when I go out and buy retail products because. Oh, that's not why I'm. But paying. I don't pay those taxes. I yes. pay the store. I don't pay the government yes. a dime. I pay the store. The store chooses to uh, collect on behalf of the government those taxes, and they're, they're the ones that pay the state. And so they just choose to break it down in such a way that it looks like you're only paying so much, but once you get to the register, oh, it's this much. Uh, <clears throat> because Uncle Sam has to have his cut. Yeah. I think it all boils down to can you change your mind or not? If you can't change your mind, you might as well put your head back in the sand. 
Uh, Donna said, Oregon has no sales tax. I know. I lived in Oregon for a while. Um, and that's right. But they have a very heavy income tax. You know, they're going to get it one way or the other. And they have a serious uh, property tax, too. So, you know, but that is uh, one way. And there's, I think it's, what, three states that have no sales tax? I forget. I don't know. I don't know. I've never lived in one. And Texas has no income tax, so, you know, it's a trade-off. They're going to get, they're going to get it one way or another. Yeah. They, they got their hands in it. But you arrange your life and, and do things in such a way that uh, as best as possible to not support the beast and, and the mass murdering machine that it is. Yeah. That's what I do. Learn to live in the harmony with nature. Right. Was that flash coming back in? Probably. Nope. Either that or he dropped his microphone. Or maybe he, he said he was rebooting, so. Oh, okay. Uh, there he goes. Yeah. I see you on the call, but I do not hear you. It's like if, if we want to go to Saturn through a wormhole, mm -hmm. actually all you really have to do is tune in a frequency that's the same as Saturn yeah. and step through. But then you'll appear in, in the middle of the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> if, you, if you target Saturn. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you might want to Go a little bit off to the side, just to <laughs> I don't want to be the first one to try that, but yeah, the theory is want to send the probe first. <laughs> yeah, send Tommy; he'll do anything. That's right. Well, it says well, here, again, right? we've almost eaten up two hours and know, haven't really goes, said anything. It goes fast. I know it's been slow. Um, yeah, time goes. Oh. Uh, I think it would be kind of fun if we could invite one of these people that is a naysayer on and we can discuss theory. Okay. Hear that, Doc? You want to come on? Next week, you have been invited as a guest on Dropping a Cool Show. It, it's a whole lot easier to discuss theory when you get, or uh, when you got somebody that you can talk to rather than somebody that just makes one statement and you never hear again. Yeah. Well, he's he's been around for most of the shows. He was, he's been listening. Yeah, I've I've noticed that he's, he's very, there. He's very interested in looking and seeing something on paper. Uh, so is Uncle Sam. Yeah, I <laughs> know. Uh, he says he don't do work so well. But, well, the invitation is there. And other than that, you're going to have to wait till he publishes the uh, the open source materials. And that, with, with the advancements that we've made in the past few weeks, getting the people to finally get out of the books, uh -huh. Then it's it's really cut down almost a year. I was thinking maybe two years, and now I'm thinking maybe a year before we can get everything done and and ready to go out, and maybe even sooner. We will probably have a speaker come out first, yeah, out for your radio or something, because there's no distortion out of these coils, which is a little unusual. Uh -huh. And we can make a speaker that won't burn out with these coils. You won't have to have that cardboard to to break. It'll all be done off a copper soundboard. Right. I hear the flash coming back. I see it. Yeah, by speaker stick powder. 
Do your speakers take a powder? Yeah, I've got a glitch in my system that underlying somewhere. I can't. Nobody seems to be able to figure it out. Yeah, but I get occasionally get booted off my uh, speakers. It might have something to do with you putting powder on them. <laughs> powder. Yeah. yeah. Don't snort off your speaker. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I don't. No, I don't do any of that crap anymore. Anyway, gave all time. I'm too old speakers, to be playing with. You said your speakers stuff. took a powder. Well, that was an expression yeah. from the uh, uh, old country where I'm from. Uh, okay, I thought you were powdering your speakers. <laughs> no, um, I've got some kind of glitch in my uh, I audio. Know. I know. And it'll just, and I think it's Windows. It's just a fucking mess, no mm -hmm. matter how you use it. Actually, and that, it's just, are you using voice meter? Yes. That's what it is. If you go into voice meter and then just change the... Uh, the output speakers to something else and then put it right back, that easily uh -huh. fixes it. Well, see, that's the shit I need to learn. But I, I Or the microphone. I've got the thing right in front of me. But it was doing yeah, that before I, added, before I added it to it. It was, uh, it was yeah. something in the system. I think it's Windows. I'm all kind of typing because people don't find the information that they want on the Internet. And I'm just as bad as everybody else. I only look at what I want to see. <laughs> well, yeah, welcome. Join the club. Yeah, <laughs> You and about seven and a half billion other people. <laughs> people see what they want to see. Um, and there's so much more, and I want to learn every bit of it. Yeah. And knowing that in the beginning kind of helps. But you do. You know and understand that that's not, that's not possible. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and send... Is a direct link to the Akashic Records. Actually, more uh -huh. at a given moment. So, yeah. And then you have all the knowledge of the universe. Yes, indeed. Uh, also, if you want to read the original version of the Bible, read the Emerald Tablets. And the uh -huh. story of Gilgamesh. you got to read Josephus. Yeah, He's, he was one of the original writers, but it's all plagiarized from the Emerald Tablets and the uh, Epic of Gilgamesh from the Anunnaki. Right. No, I'm not interested in that. <laughs> and another thing, uh, for the Bible readers now, this is really good. Go to, Mo uh, go to Numbers and where Moses gives you the number of his people and the number of their flocks and the number of the troops and sets them out in the four cardinal positions, uh -huh. those are transformer frequencies. Uh -huh. Check it out, you guys that are doing this stuff. Try those frequencies and see what happens. Uh -huh. I haven't yet, but I've, I've, I've translated it all into real numbers. Yeah. And remember, score means 20. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think there's some hidden esoteric knowledge written into it. Yeah. yeah and all the religious texts and stuff, I think that's how the secret knowledge has been passed around. But um, Well, I, got, I saw a Persian a rug from 300 B.C. or 300 A.D., and it had an inductance, capacitance, resistance circuit in the border that was wired correctly. Yeah. Yeah, you told us about that. That's yeah. just amazing. So much fascinating stuff going on. We only get to see a fraction of it. Yeah. It's, it's, that's what really bugs me is, is the loss of potential. Yeah. That, that, that we, but like I said, we should have had hover cars back before Tesla. Oh yeah, you know, uh, petroleum being used as a fuel should have never even happened. That's right. It's just we shouldn't even have smog. <laughs> well, well, smog is a dragon. Yeah. So. Anyway, sorry, Flash, I'm getting you down again, ain't I? <laughs> Why would you do a big 
something last night? I was taking care of the newts. In this uh, night. Yes, getting the newts ready. No, they're done. I oh. sent them. Oh, you're already done, right? You got, well, you yeah, have the last it. five minutes. You're not going to bring up anything that they're not going to hear. I don't Unless know. they shut you off. We might give a uh, long, groundbreaking announcement at the very last minute. You never know. It's not nice to do your homework in class. Yeah. Oh, hey, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those days. Oh, God, what a boring period of time that was. <laughs> so, it really, I think school ruined my life, in, uh, my family life, and I ran away from home because I really didn't want to go to school. I think when I look back, that had a big play in it. Yeah. That school thing boring. was ugh, punishing. Imagine, imagine how boring it would be if you knew everything. Like Larry Oh, Jones. no, I don't know. I, it's Wouldn't not it like that, Robert. Wouldn't it be boring as fuck? If you really knew just, everything, you had nothing to strive for, nothing to reach for, nothing, no... Uh, Oh, but just think of where you could go if you knew everything that they know now. Think of the things that you could do with that knowledge. Oh, you're talking about you want to know everything comprises the total information that uh, humanity has discovered. Yeah. As opposed to know everything. Yeah. No, I'd rather be where I'm at and listen to you guys tell me what I don't know. <laughs> at least your version of what I don't know with what little bit of experience I have makes sense. Yeah. And the minute I hear somebody tell me everything you know so far, forget that. Then I know they got something because that's a harsh thing to open with. Yeah. It's like when you start a new job, you don't even know what questions to ask yet. Yeah. Oh, I bragged about this on the door table is I would get a job and then tell the guy I had experience at whatever whatever it was, machine something or another, but then I'd always say at the end, well, you know, I know you got a certain way you want it done. I don't yeah. want to do it my own way, so show me how you want it done. Yeah. And yeah. I'll make sure I follow your path. That's how you learn. <laughs> and exactly, but it would claim experience. and Hey, just show me your way so I don't just yeah. walk over you with because my own You can way. watch somebody do it one time and pick it up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it, and anybody can make one mistake on a new machine you're not familiar with, blah, blah, blah. But come on, two or three minutes and you learn the job. It's yeah. Back in the day, you know, it's young. Most things like that are repetitive, and once, yeah, yeah. once you've done yeah. it a few times, it's, it's a big deal. It's just yeah. a matter of getting faster at it. I, I remember my hard. first my first hot um, wall plug. <laughs> well, it's like doing electrical work. Everything yeah. you need to know is written on the box that that device came in. Yes. Yeah. Wow. You guys. Well, anyway, we're coming yeah, up to that the last. To read the fucking manual. Yeah. The last the two manual. minutes here on the uh, in, dr the dropping a coil show with Larry Woods and Rob Works and me, Flash. And I just wanted to make sure we got this in at the end. And you guys, why don't we go out? Rob will end the show when he wants to. But why don't we go out with you two talking? And uh, I just say thanks a lot for everybody that uh, joined us tonight. And I'm cheering out. Bye. Have a good night, Flash. But I'm still here. But I'm with right, right. you, you. Okay. Thanks, Flash. Um, I don't Colin. really have much to uh, add. Um, if you have any words of wisdom, do you want to drop on us? Yeah. Uh, Look at what you're doing on your on your test bench and look at the things that you've got on your test bench that are influencing it. Uh -huh. Every every other piece of equipment that you've got there influences it in one way or another, either through a magnetic field or an electrical field, either right. through induction or magnetism. I will keep all these things in mind when I get ready to actually build a test bench. <laughs> yeah. Right now, I don't have a, a test bench, quote, quote. But uh, I'm just working with and, can. And if you don't have clean power, put a capacitor in your ground wire uh -huh. so that you can bleed that interference off. Right. Okay. That's it. That's all you got to do. All righty then. Well, it has been another 
Thursday afternoon, dropping a coil show with uh, Larry Flash and myself. And thank you, everybody, for listening in. Thanks, Larry, for all of your knowledge and information. Thanks for your input, Flash, and we will see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.